All right, guys, before today's episode, just a quick reminder that tickets are still available for our next live show at the Pavilion Theatre on Sunday the 31st of March. It is fast approaching and the tickets are going fast as well, so please do snap them up if you want to come along. And as ever, guys, what else can people do? <laughs> people. Support us on Patreon. Yes. From as little as £3 a month, you will get a bonus episode once every two weeks. Uh, they're always a lot of fun, aren't they, boys, the three of us? Just yes. hanging out. Fun. Shooting the shit. the shit. Classical, some laugh. Classical. Yeah, some people say they prefer just us three instead of the guests, so that's where you'll get that more over there. Yes. Although we do have great guests, including on today's episode. Yes. Of course. Of course. You'll get amazing guests, but if you are one of the people who prefer just the boys, that's where it'll be. Aye. Yes. You also get access to the live shows that we've recorded in the past from London, Edinburgh and Glasgow. And you'll get uh, early dibs on tickets for future events like work in progress shows and live podcasts. Absolutely. And finally, um, as you'll know, uh, all three of our specials are available on the Some Life YouTube channel as well. So check them out if you haven't already. Free hours of stand-up for fuck all. So uh, dish out a lot of free content. Yes, that's it. Uh, Don't right, say we're no good to you. That's all we're saying. Um, but if you'd like to be good to us and good to yourself, uh, <laughs> treat yourself to the Easter treat, come along to the pavilion. Maybe we'll see you there. Um, but aside to that, guys, enjoy today's episode. Enjoy. Today. enjoy. Welcome to the Some Laugh Podcast. It could be like, oh, that was some laugh, or there was just some laugh. Well, some laughs. Laughs. well <laughs> no promising all laugh. No, <laughs> it's, it's, there's going to be some. It's some laugh. Last time I seen you was at the comedian's party in London. Do you remember much Fuck. of that? <laughs> I think I was better at that one. I was the Radio 4 one, I fell down the stairs. <laughs> <laughs> and then I went to the Northwest <laughs> went to that Northwest comedy was. But because it's always like just the frog and bucket wins everything, that way I'm not asked. So <laughs> but I don't drink like the problem is everyone just everyone in comedy just sees me piss all the time. But I only get drunk at gigs. No, not at gigs, you know. <laughs> but I mean like at events or things with people away from it. But I don't drink at home anymore. And I used to drink so much that now my body just can't. So I can't. I've not found out what my drinks are yet at, mm-hmm. at the age of 42. <laughs> yeah. And, and so I can't figure it out, get the mix right. So I just got, I mean, I had like four drinks. I was shit faced at the Northwest one. And it's so bad that I got up on stage to make, I won one, which I didn't expect. So I had to go up and talk. But I didn't, I can't remember what I said. It didn't make any sense. And then I went back up to apologise for how bad it was. Then I fa- <laughs> walked off, then fell over an open spot who's in a wheelchair. <laughs> Spilt my drink of wine all over him, but then got stuck between him and a wall. <laughs> <laughs> it was horrible. The, the, the thing for you, Phil, oh, by the way, can you put that? Oh, yeah, sorry. Uh, I uh, should save all this for the budge. <laughs> <laughs> we have started, but... No, have we started? Can <laughs> 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 we see me on tour? <laughs> Especially, I always make sure I've got wheelchair access. <laughs> you know, I can fall all over. Um, Your kind of character, though, that is like every like all that stuff happening and going wrong. People would just look and go, "Ah, it's just foul." Like, that's yeah, yeah, doing a bit, yeah, <laughs> assaulting an open spot in a wheelchair. <laughs> that's Phil's thing, isn't it? Very avant garde. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's just making him flammable. But yeah, it was horrible. Yeah, I don't know what. But yeah, so you you saw me the one in London. Uh, yeah. yeah. And that was what I think I was all right. I think I was drunk, but I was like being really positive. I think I was trying to be like, "Hey, everyone's great," and I think I kind of left. I don't know, maybe maybe I thought I left early. Then I said, <laughs> <laughs> "Got a feeling you're going to go." No, Phil, you were awful. <laughs> well, what I remember I about it, over two wheelchairs that was. <laughs> <laughs> is that so? There's some place. Uh, they were all about to figure out where they were going after it and everybody's like well, let's go to Jerry's and then everybody's like no we can't go to Jerry's because Phil's got his own bar <laughs> <laughs> yeah I did get him on bar but what did you do I don't know oh. <laughs> no one knows really and then Paul Ricketts comedian you know Paul well, he's told me it wasn't my fault but everyone but apparently everyone decided that it was my fault right but I remember this place in London, it was so horrible. Like I went there once years ago with Mick Ferry and a couple of people. And it was only us in there. There's only four of us. And it's like one of these bars where you have to be like, oh yeah, do you know? To... And they have a little shutter on the door. And it's like, you come downstairs. And it's we went there. There's only us and uh and someone on the key uh, on the piano playing like Elton John songs. So we were just singing Rocket Man. And she told, came over and told us all to shut up. <laughs> and I went, but there's no one else in here. So I thought we were just she went, it's not it's not karaoke. I went, Oh, right, sorry. And they said, and are you going to buy a drink or what to my friends? And they went, yeah, I went, right, okay. And that was, uh, 
So she and that night they were quite rude. No. And I probably said something, but I can't remember what. But apparently we got barred. But um so no one could go back there. <laughs> it's fine. But I think so this year I was very good and um and just like being positive with everyone, you know, Aye. being nice. Yeah. Until Milo McCabe always wants me to get drunk and aggressive. He calls it Dark Phil. Because <laughs> I said to him once, I went, you don't want to see Dark Phil. And he was like, oh, yeah, I want to see Dark Phil. So he kept by and went, well, don't buy me whiskey. And he just kept sneaking whiskey into my drinks. Oh, fuck. Yeah, basically I was spiked by Milo. <laughs> <laughs> and then, I, I mean, Dark Phil came out. I mean, he was I don't know what he did, but um, I think he just ended up shouting at the promoter, I think. So Dark Phil's not fun. It's like, not like crazy. What's he going to do? He's just me going, you can fly. I never like you. I never like you. And then wake up in a field. It's Dark Phil that's barred. Yeah, yeah, Dark yeah. Phil's barred. Phil, I can go in. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's like, it's not been my case if I have to have good, if to be a serial killer. But, um, so Milo turned up. With like Elliot and everyone, they were like, uh, Oh, let's get dark. Phil, I went, Oh, no, he goes, Come on, because I was being quite positive. I thought I was trying to tell everyone how great uh, I thought. This must just have been t- before I got. <laughs> yeah, but- <laughs> <laughs> I thought I was really good at that one. <laughs> I was very good. Yeah, you were in really good mood. Just tell everyone how good the stuff was. I was like, yeah, yeah. I thought I'd bring a bit of positivity. And it turns out I must be. <laughs> <laughs> the first thing I said to you is, how's things been since you, you get nominated? Oh, you just went, oh. <laughs> yeah, I guess I, uh, oh, yeah, not positive about myself. I think I've just plugged your mic in, by the way. It's um, probably in already. Oh. Yeah, it's, what, it's still what? Yeah, yeah, it's good. No, don't just... worry about it. It's got a third in media. I thought I'd use it. <laughs> <laughs> no, but, but so Milo was like, I want you to be negative. So of course he just Troy Hawks just blown up massively. Yeah. So I, I went, oh yeah, I said, oh yes, and I went, I'm not gonna do it. He went, oh come on, let's get done. I went, all right, then join this. Yeah, I think maybe change out. Let's have the uh, the goodbye guild instead of the greeters guild, because that act's done its course, hasn't it? I think it's run it, haven't it? <laughs> hello, hello, do you want to see the same joke again? Hello, welcome to the same joke. <laughs> and let's have the goodbye guild. So I went, fucking hell, milk it. So I did that. <laughs> then I went round, then I went to Elliot. I do remember Milo being pissed off at you. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, went, I went to Elliot and had a go at him. <laughs> I, went round, I went, right, you happy now? And he went, yes. I went, all right, thank you. And they went back to it positive. <laughs> so it's fair enough. But he's, I wouldn't do that. I mean, if 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 Milo was genuinely insecure and uh, not successful, mm-hmm. I wouldn't have said that. No. no. But he can take it, can't he? Yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. He and he literally asked for it. And he was spiking you. And he was spiking me. <laughs> listen, if he's there, listen, I'll tell you. <laughs> I'll, I'll inter- you like greeting people. You can, I'll uh, introduce you to my lawyer. My <laughs> lawyer. <laughs> How do you feel about that? Uh, you can set a camera up in the corner if you want. Put your dressing gown on. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm going to go. He's one of my mates. <laughs> I've only got three in comedy. I've lost one. <laughs> you are a you are a comics comic. I would say, Phil. Thanks. <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, I can't get on telly. <laughs> <laughs> you know. But you did do it. You've done telly before. You done. Well, you, I remember no, watching the Funs and Games uh, pilot. Oh was god! A pilot. Yeah, I tried rewatching it the other day. It was painful. Yeah, I had but... more fun watching the camera they shoved up my ass the other week. <laughs> <laughs> I had more fun watching that on the screen than watching that again. Um, no, it was all right, but um, it's pain. It's hard to watch because you just to see all the mistakes and how. It was way too scripted, and it makes me cringe a bit that all mm. these lines are. I didn't. I wrote loads of versions. When it came to the the recording script, I don't think I'd even seen. I was like, "What the hell?" Mm. So, anyway, so it's a bit painful for me to watch now because I just see it as a real missed opportunity. Mm. What was that? The vibe of that? That was kind of like. It was like a kids show, wasn't it? Yeah, so it was a kids show in Edinburgh that was like not for kids, but I put it in the kids section so the kids would come, and it was like really inappropriate. But it was, <laughs> but it was like, but it was a kids show, but it was, but the kids just saw the games and songs, but all the parents could hear the lyrics of me talk about like a divorce and, <laughs> and all the pain and things, and then we'd have like Mick Ferry coming in to tell a story, but it was just pissed and he had a black eye. And stuff and <laughs> we had a clown at one point, and then it turns out I've booked a clown. No one knows where I've got it from, but halfway through he's like just dancing in front of the kids and he takes his shirt off and he goes <laughs> weird, and then I go and all the kids go hey, hey. and then he just puts cream on his hand and goes great he's got to do a cream pie that's a bit like a clown that he just goes up to one of the mums and goes like, <laughs> and I go he's not a clown get him out get him out <laughs> so he got like all these things so it's all that um, so we did it for TV but it kind of and to be honest it wasn't bad it was quite a good building block but it just uh, and then it kind of went to a series and then all these other politics and things. I just basically didn't like the way it was going that way, so I sort of right. pulled it back. I mean, I regret it massively now. 
<laughs> I'll do anything now, literally. I literally anything. If someone's watching, I'll do anything. <laughs> I even made fun of some of the terrible TV shows that are on. There's only a few, but some are dog shit, aren't they? Mm. I even made fun of them in my show this year, and I was so nervous about not being asked on them <laughs> that I took them out. Oh. And now, if I'd have known, I wouldn't be able to get on them even anyway. after this. I'd have left them in. In fact, they're going in next year's show. <laughs> <laughs> not that you'll be around. But, uh, anyway. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and you, and oh, you slag off podcasts as well. I always enjoy you slagging off podcasts. Yeah. Was that in the show? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, I've only got three or well, two now. Two friends. <laughs> Sorry, Milo. <laughs> um, but yeah. Yeah. Um, I can't remember what the question was. Yeah, funds and games, yeah. But that was nine years ago. Uh-huh. So I wouldn't mind going on telly again. <laughs> <laughs> even, in, even your crap shows I'll go on. <laughs> also, if everyone's on Jonathan Ross now, can't I be sat on Jonathan Ross? <laughs> Fucking hell, I've seen open spazzy so he's beating the gong at the frog and bucket on Jonathan Ross talking about nothing. So mm. have you, it's so embarrassing you've got a comedian sat there, no one knows, and they go, what you, and they're not even promoting anything. I'm like, what are they there for? Mm. Put me in there. <laughs> I'll promote all my charity work. <laughs> <laughs> Taking disabled comedians to venues I'm at so I can fall over them. <laughs> I don't think that bit's on the podcast, so I'm just making callbacks to a no, story we tell. Oh, about Christ. It's been waiting a while since you got here. <laughs> you need to tell people when you start. <laughs> I'm, sure I'm just else. coming. I've already told you I've been sat away over four hours and I'm not quite <laughs> decompressed yet. And you're like, right, record, get him. <laughs> oh, <laughs> made so many mistakes already sorry but yeah next question <laughs> <laughs> you um, right you had a band at your, <coughs> we, me and Stuart went to see your show the same day it was fucking brilliant oh, thank you. Yeah, uh, sure. you had a, a live band on stage with every day yeah yeah how did that work <laughs> practically and um, basically how much fucking money did that cost you oh well, uh, well in Edinburgh it was also like I'll give you this minimum from like the bucket every day mm. And then it started doing well, so it was like, oh, God, give them the work. Already. So it cost me money, yeah. But, <laughs> and then for the tour, it's like a nightmare. You just can't do it. Mm. So, so you're having them with you in the tour? Yeah, yeah, I'm just yeah? going to lose a lot of money. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is the thing about funds and games. There's like 12, every Edinburgh show I do, there's like 12 people in it. So you can't tour it. So I tried to make a show this year. I went, I'll make it so it's just stand up and I can tour it. And then I went, I'll put a band in it. I was like, ah, oh, <laughs> did it again. Because you've had plants in your your tour shows and your front mm. shows and that before. What kind of stuff have you got them to do? I had, um, oh, there's all sorts, really, over the years. One year, I had a curtain built. I had this thing at the Udderbelly. And I'd, <laughs> such a stupid idea. So I thought it'd be funny to have, like, at the end of the show, I, there's a bit where I go off and then it turns out there's another venue behind me, so the curtain's open <laughs> and that's, like, the main venue, but my bit's just a small room at the front of oh, the actual good. main room and they've been nicking my audience throughout the show, so the actual audience are mostly behind me by the end of the show oh, and I'm trying fun. to perform to eight people. I'm going, oh, well, fuck, has everyone gone? And the curtain opens and it's an improv group <laughs> behind me and I've been slagging off improv for the whole hour. <laughs> Because it is shit. And, uh, the majority of it is shit. Um, so it's just me slagging off improv, and then it turns out there's an improv group behind me. Um, but I had to pay to have a curtain put in, rail, it costs like a grand. Fuck I thought it'd be dead cheap. I thought I'd just get a curtain. Yeah. And then they went, Man, we don't worry, we'll take it all off at the end. Terrible idea. I didn't make any money. So I lost <laughs> thousands on that. Oh, God, stupid. But it was quite funny. That's a good but idea. impractical. How did you how did you find a venue that had that specific? It sounds quite specific. Yeah, so the other belly, we chatted through the rooms, and they had like um, I think it's called like the white belly, and it's like um, and that's the other thing because it, it was an awkward shape, it wasn't just square. So I had to have mm. these cur- curved curtains made. Aye. Like, Fuck. And then they had to put the rig in, so they paid for the rig to go in. And then charge me. I'm not, mm. not that I'm not going to go to the underbar. I mean, I wouldn't go, can you change your venue for me? <laughs> and then I paid someone to make these curtains. Yeah. They didn't work, so I had to fix them. <laughs> oh, fucking, I've still got them if everyone's any <laughs> curtains. Well, you can you plug them at the end. Yeah, yeah. yeah You've got a cave because it's the shape of it, the cave front or something. But um, Did you not pretend, yeah. though, that you had a stag do in your audience one year or something like that? Yeah, yeah I paid a stag do. <laughs> 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 I would stag the dress as a pig. 
uh, the stag, and then I'd pay them to sort of like hang around for ten, like, sort of like an hour before the show, so people would see him and go, "Oh, there is a stag." I've seen him in the beer garden opposite the hive, like getting pissed, like, like chucking cans on the street. And they'd, get, they'd come and get the bag of cans and the pig outfit at the beginning when I was setting up, and they'd go out and just be knobheads and pushing the kids. <laughs> But then they'd be like really in the show. They weren't too disruptive. They were just a, enough to sort of annoy people. Then eventually they'd leave, and it. But it all worked quite well because it is that th- kind of thing. You go, of course they're on a stag do, and they've gone to a show, and they don't know mm, what it is, and yeah. it's just shit, and they hate it. <laughs> and it's like it's just me going, of course it's a stag do, and biggest arts festival in the world, and someone dresses a fucking pig, <laughs> throwing a can at me. Of course there is. Yeah, it all fits again. Like you say, with the persona, I think people go, yeah, of course it would happen yeah. to fair. So, Do you not worry that success would not suit your persona? Like you've painted yourself in a corner. I don't have to worry about that. We all know I don't have to worry about that. You saw the car I rode in on. <laughs> did you say that was 50 quid, that cost you? 50 quid, yeah. How the fuck did you find a car for 50 quid? Well, I'm going to say two words, Liam Pickford. <laughs> <laughs> What did he buy it for? Did he mask it up? <laughs> well, he said to me, he went, I went, oh, I'm going to get a car, I'm going to have moved back to Manchester. He went, he could have had my old one. I went, oh, right, well, he went, well, you could still have it if you want, it's just outside. And he had this old beetle just rotting outside his house. And I said, well, you know, you can get scrap metals going up, you can probably get 350 quid for that. And he just couldn't be bothered getting rid of it, really. So he said, come and get it. So I went to Bristol, but I didn't know I got COVID on the way. Mm-hmm. So I, I became a super spreader this weekend. So <laughs> sorry to all the nans. That, well, they've gone. Um, <laughs> and um, and I got the car, and I went to get the car, and it was this bit, and it looked good in the photo. But as I say, to make sure the battery works and mm. all this. And as I was getting closer to it, I went, he's not opened this for a year. And it was covered in leaves and a flat tyre. <laughs> and I just... <laughs> And I thought, well, I'll have to give him some money. So I thought, I'll give him 100 quid. Mm-hmm. So I did him and I thought that would be a, you know, a gesture to go, look, I can't want to just take a car off you. Yeah? So I went, look, I'm going to give you some money. And then we turned the corner and I saw it. And I went, oh, fuck, why did I wait to say that? <laughs> and I saw it. I went, this is going to cost me money to get rid of it. And it was just like at an angle like this. And I was just going, he went, oh, oh really, mate? And I was like trying to leaf out as much. Because I would said <laughs> how much yet. So I was like, well, try and get out as much. I'm not giving 100 for this piece of shit. <laughs> 50, yeah, 50, I'll give you 50. And then that'll do. And then, um, and then we jump-started it. And uh, we had to, um, and that was it. It's run for two years, though. Aye. It's great. No problems. Well, I want to know <laughs> the, the Coolant fan doesn't work, so I have to constantly have the hot <laughs> the heat on. If I hit traffic, I've got to just sit there melting. Going, oh my god! That's why I, I was saying to you guys, I really don't want to hit traffic on the way there because I'm going to be like, yeah, yeah. Gonna, yeah, yeah, something like that. It makes more sense now, doesn't it? I, I was wondering why it was... shouldn't be that bad. I'm just like, oh my god. <laughs> Feel bad in the back, sweating. <laughs> oh fucking hell! Because well, you know. you're quite a tall man, fellas. Well, that's mm. quite a, a, a small beetle. Car. Is the kind of it's quite a small. Well, these ones quite good on the legroom, mm. uh, but <laughs> it's such a weird car because it's a two liter engine, mm. and it's a, it's the same engine as a Golf, really. So mm. it's really funny because it looks ridiculous. But then he goes, <laughs> like, don't even see Roger Rabbit. But he has a car in that way. It's kind of like when it goes off, it goes like a cartoon. It goes, <laughs> I always feel it does that. It goes, builds up. I go, oh, God. <laughs> it will fall apart one day. But it's... Did Hitler not have a beetle? Was that a mummy? Yeah, not a bright red one, though. <laughs> 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 oh, there's Hitler. <laughs> Tumbling out. <laughs> so why he's too angry because yeah, the fucking yeah. cooling thing was the one. <laughs> so, like cross spinning. <laughs> Squirting water. Yeah, out one of those ones with the eyelashes on the yeah. <laughs> <laughs> moustache <laughs> oh funny nice Hitler. new jacket Phil thank Since you yeah. Yeah. speaking of Nazis it's a bit Nazi isn't it? <laughs> I was actually uh, thinking Elmer Fudd there when you mentioned Roger Elmer Fudd I know he was bald <laughs> <laughs> Be my foot. I've got all this hair I've got. I <laughs> mean, um, see when you were doing the fun games, you mentioned about you were talking about your divorce. I think that's the first time I've ever seen you perform, and mm. I was fucking howling at <laughs> you just be like talking about that, inventing on stage about that. How true is that? Is that it's not be- true at all? No. Is it based on a it- relationship of sorts? Or oh no, 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 no. It was um, <laughs> just all fabricated. But it's, it's just the so, vibe that's divorced, isn't it? It's the vibe. I give off of that energy. <laughs> divorced, yeah. yeah. 
I mean, any relationship that I've failed in has been almost certainly mostly my fault. <laughs> but I couldn't go on stage and say that. No. Oh, hey, guys, uh, I'm really bad at holding down relationships and, uh, <laughs> and jobs. Anyway, feel sorry for me. They go, no, these guys are fucking idiots. Um, no, it's kind of, well, it all came out of different things. Like, it's all like where, where you are in life. So, so the like, the recent set is more, the act is more who I am, mm-hmm. which is because a lot of it was written like when I was in this house share. Mm. And it's pathetic to be this age. I mean, why am I driving a 50 pound car? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's, do you know what I mean? It's like, what is this life really? So it's quite funny. So you sort of build on it and of course you exaggerate certain bits. So like I don't live in the house share anymore. But all that stuff is true from there. And there's all the bits in the show are pretty much true. But obviously, you know, you, you, you do comedy, you don't go out and say that. People would find it's too depressing if it was the absolute truth. <laughs> um, so, yeah. So it's all sort of based on more like uh, my vibe <laughs> and bank balance. But yeah, there's elements, I suppose, of everything. <laughs> It's really made me think about it. Actually. I'm <laughs> to, it's made me sad thinking about it. I'm supposed to be promoting the tour. I don't want to, I don't want to go on it. <laughs> don't come. <laughs> it's a terrible idea. The show but, is brilliant, we've got to say. It's very, very funny. Oh, thank you, it's yeah. Aye. It's a surprise, really. Well, it was not a surprise, but it's like, <laughs> out, yeah, it was just fun. I thought I'd just do a fun one and just have a silly, a silly old time. Do you think there was a party because, like... Because that was your attitude going into it, and then you end up getting nominated. Like, do you think it's almost like you know, you try all these different elaborate things. And know that your show wasn't elaborate because it still had a lot yeah. of. I'm trying hard to not it. to spoil it here. There's a lot, there's a lot going <laughs> yeah. on. But like, when you just go, ah, fuck it, I'll no care. And then that's when it comes. Like, was that a surprise yeah, yeah. that you got nominated for you? Or what? It was, yeah. It was weird though. I kind of weird feeling about this year. I think because, like, but I kind of did that with the funds and games year, but it's been so long. And I've always tried, like I say, to do things, but some of them I've gone. I've always tried to do something different, and sometimes you go a bit, you don't quite hit it right. So, like, the curtain thing was good, but it only got good about two weeks into the show. It was a mess at the beginning. Mm -hmm. But, like, Matt Ewans and Finn Taylor really helped shape that into what it became. And then other shows, like, I did one, Au Revoir, which which I really liked, but that was so complicated. Too many, so many people, you can't do anything with it. And it's so festival thingy. And then that wasn't ready at first. So when all the judges and that come in, it just wasn't there. So because I always mm. thought you're supposed to build shows. It's so cheap to get into mine. And it's free pretty much if you don't. So I always spend a five days because you can't get nine people together who live in different parts of the country other than Edinburgh. So I'm like try and f- it's always funny, but it that can get becomes what it's meant to be after about a week or so. But this one I thought, right, we're gonna because the year before I did was show Hedgehog, which I really liked, but it was again a bit too there's too much it was all based around this one premise of me pretending like basically I thought everyone my age is talking about having kids and every comic because I think I'm the older troop of generation of comics now like you know and it's quite funny to say why I like I still think I'm a comedian's comedian but I was trying to figure out why I was like why do people still find me that funny I went oh it's because your life is still the same as it was 10 <laughs> 15 years ago you're not actually you're not living the life of a proper 42 year old man and that's quite depressing, really. So I was like, going, well, what the fuck am I meant to talk about? Because everyone's talking about the kids. So I thought, I'll just pretend I've got kids. So I just did, a, <laughs> so I just did an hour about having two kids and <laughs> how much it changed my life. And, <laughs> and you know, without them, what is it? The whole message at the end is that, like, without having kids, what is, you know, at my age, the, for me, not for everyone, I get, you know, I'm not saying everyone should have, but for me personally, if I didn't have them, what would I have? Because I'm 42, I live in a house share. I'd like, have nothing and they've changed my life and we're actually getting married to the mum again and all this. And I was like, oh my God. And then it's at the end, and then I do two other twists because I thought it's going to be too obvious. But if I do two other twists, then people think that is the twist. And then I do this big finale. So they'll go, well, that's a big, f- oh my God, there's three twists. And then someone goes, they go, tell them the truth. And I go, oh, I don't have kids. And I went, oh, for fuck's sake. So like, yeah. And they go, oh, yeah. And then they go, did you make the mixed race again? I went, yeah. Because why? Why I went? I don't know. I just thought it made me look cool. I don't know. I thought I don't know that because you know this is wrong. Phil. I go, yeah, I don't know this. So it like so that was like the the show last year. And then I thought, well, why don't you just instead of trying to do all that and spend so long trying to lead people, why don't you just be funny for an hour? So that was the idea. And I thought just be silly and have and one that I could enjoy because I didn't really enjoy the other year because a lot of it's me crying and, <laughs> and, and like going oh god my beautiful 
There's all this stuff about going, <laughs> like, I, I didn't know I had kids for a year, so I'm going to get into that uh, headspace of not knowing you. And then you find out you've got kids and why didn't she tell you? And then I had a whole bit about going, have you ever met your own kids? And like, how you meet a child that's yours, but you've never met them before? <laughs> like, how do you introduce yourself to them? Like, oh, hey. And then um, so there's all these different things. And then I started missing them after the show. I was like, oh, I wish I had kids. I went, oh, no, don't need that. Don't need that energy in my life. So I thought I'd just have a silly one this year. And uh, I thought if I've abandoned it, it just keeps it. Keeps yeah. it going. Keeps it going. And I'm yeah. pretty sure you did do an Elton John song in the show. We did two, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> fuck you, that place. Yeah, yeah, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we're back, Jenny's. <laughs> I'm sure, we'll go, Jenny's after. It'll take us eight hours. <laughs> but did you know, was there no something else? Was there not another show that you pretended something? Because I, I heard you talk about when you were on the radio. And um, was that the kids' thing or was it something else? And you had to, they were, they were asking you about like uh, some thing that your show was maybe about but you were only pretending oh yeah my first one yeah yeah I pretended I was an orphan <laughs> 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 it's my first Edinburgh show before the first, and I pretended that I don't my, at the age of 30 my mum and dad had told me they'd been they'd taken too long to tell me and told me at 30 that I was adopted and I was like why now and it's because my dad was coming out of prison but they had to tell me it was going to come back. So it was all this thing. And then I had to go on the radio, I had to go on Radio 5 Live and sit there. So I was doing all the press as if it was true. <laughs> so I put in this PR and they were like, and so the whole thing was like all the press and all the articles of me going, I can't believe everyone going, oh my God, I can't believe you found out. And I, I was sat on Radio 5 Live with this bloke who had an inoperable brain tumour. And he was talking about this and I was like, God, this is like the brain and he's doing everything for charity. I'm going, I, I'm a real piece of shit. I'm lying. And this guy's talking about his brain tumour. I was going, oh my God. And then they went, well, Phil, you've had your fair share of bad news. <laughs> <laughs> we don't, this guy could die during the interview. He's not there. And they're going, oh, yeah, well, you think that's bad. <laughs> Wait to hear my story. And I was going, I was just lying. So in the break, I had to tell him. I went, I can't. I said, I'm not adopted at all. But I didn't tell the presenter. And he was like, oh, he, said, and he, th he thought it was really funny, luckily. So I was like, oh, God. And then about two, three years ago, uh, a friend of mine came up to Edinburgh and her friend was with her and I was chatting and she went, I recognise your voice. She went, have you been on the radio? And I went, yeah, yeah, well, I used to have a radio thing. She went, that's no, not that. She went, did you ever do Radio 5 Live? I went, no, no, I've never been on Radio 5 Live. She was like, I'm sure you have. She kept going, I'm sure you have. She went, were you, uh, did you do a show about being adopted? And I went, yeah. She went, my husband was on the show with you. With he's got He had a brain tumour. And I went, oh my God, yeah. And I said, I felt so bad. And she went, yeah, he's still alive. And I went, is he? She went, yeah, she went, it's really awkward. Like, no one knows why he's still alive. The brain tumour's still there, but it's just not killed him yet. And all the neighbours are thinking he's made it up. Yeah, I, I mean, he's just pretending. Yeah, right. so they all think he's doing the same thing. He's <laughs> both on the, on the show bullshitting. But, uh, so, yeah, that was fun. Where does this instinct come from? <laughs> to <laughs> fucking make everything up? Like, what? Because it would never occur to me to do any of this kind of stuff. Because like, what, what, like, actually, if you think about it, like, you starting off and kidding on your off and then you do it so long here and then you start kidding on oh, yeah. <laughs> kids. Be grandkids next to the fridge. Hello. Oh, God. I miss them. <laughs> but where Did do you... you think that? What makes you want to do those kind of shows, would you say? I think it was like, well, life's boring, isn't it? Really. Yeah. I think. Well, mine is. <laughs> <laughs> so why would I want to talk about that? But I'm quite a private person, really. So... <laughs> um, we want people knowing the truth we should just sit around playing uh, Dead Space 2 <laughs> again <laughs> um, so yeah I don't know really I just thought well I used to like Andy Kaufman and stuff you know mm. like that you yeah. know so I suppose I, and I never wanted to do stand up so I've never really had any interest in writing yeah. stand ups people who've seen my show will know <laughs> I'm not had any interest in working on stand up um, so I just thought I never wanted to just do stand up, so I thought I'd do all these things that I'd find interesting, which would be playing it straight. So like the first one with the or the the orphan one was that nothing I couldn't do a show, so I never actually got round to doing the show because everything was just going wrong all the time. <laughs> so like fire alarms going off and we were being evacuated and I have to do it in the beer garden. <laughs> and they're going right, people were going it was raining and stuff, and I'm there going where was I? Oh yeah, my mum's dead. And, um, <laughs> And I'd be on a wall trying to get him out of there. But once there's his family on, like, and there was like the kids and the husband and wife were sat at this picnic table with the beer going, like, watching. I went, Oh, I went, Oh, sorry, guys. I went, Have you got a ticket for this show? And they go, and they go No, no. I go, Would well, you want to fuck off, then? <laughs> you cheap bastards. And all the kids were, And I go, Fucking hell. So hey, my mum's dead. And they're like, going, So you're trying to do this with a bachelor's team, trying to find me to go fuck <laughs> And all that kind of thing. And then 
Yeah, and then he'd have like they got interrupted by the bear show, so I used to pay someone to dress as a bear and fly the bear show every day. Which was uh, <laughs> so I had these flyers made for a bear show, and it was the bear show was Will Duggan in a bear mask coming in in a vest that says all the sexy girls come up to me, and he just start rapping. And it was just like really vulgar, but it's at the point I'm trying to do the big finale where <laughs> it's, me. it's like a video of me meeting my real dad. And I'm sat outside a cafe, uh, and it's just me sat outside a cafe. Like this, and I go, and it's like two minutes of just silence, and I go. He was late, and I don't know how to edit. Like, uh, <laughs> <laughs> so about three minutes, I think. And we're just watching it, and then the bear comes in. And he just goes, "It's the fucking bear show." And the, the whole thing is, I've got the timings wrong, and normally we underrun and all that. And then I'd have a fight with the bear outside. <laughs> <laughs> but, long, but you see all the bear flies around. And I remember someone took a, a flyer up to uh, Mick Ferry. Went, "You seen the state of this bear show? <laughs> he put three stars on the flyer." And Mick went, yeah, it's not a real show, it's Phil's show. They went, oh, right. And he goes, and the quote was, uh, almost the best hour of bear themed hip hop comedy I've seen this year. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I used to find all that funny. So, and it's just sort of bled from that. And then Funs and Games is just basically the same thing. I was tricking families to come to a kid's show. <laughs> but then I thought, well, I'll make it so the parents find it funny that they go, fucking hell, this is quite funny. And then the kids don't have a clue what's going on. <laughs> so they're just dancing around. And, did they get angry, like audience members afterwards, were that they were duped? <laughs> a few. I think by the third one, like we did three. We shouldn't have done a third one. The second one was quite funny because we just sort of built on it and oh, made like it. a hangover or something? <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, it was. To be honest, yeah, probably, it's probably not as good. And it's certainly not as successful. <laughs> oh, yeah, it was the third one. We had a, um, a, yeah, no, the third one wasn't good. Um, I had a paedophile koala bear in it <laughs> I mean it crossed the line we were always straddled the line this was a space we didn't say he was a bear but basically I go this guy we've got, part of our we got funding council funding we've got to let this guy on anyway I don't want him on but here he is he just come on start singing about I'm moving into your area <laughs> I may be living closer but it doesn't make me any scarier and it was like a really good <laughs> It's like a really good disco song. He goes, dish, 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 dish. I'm moving into your air. I mean, all like harmonised. It's the uh, new jump in the shark. Nonsense yeah, yeah, the koala. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> it was horrible. Yeah, he'd come in and go in, and then he'd run off with the bubble machine going, bubble party back at my place. And I go, no, don't be kids anymore. No, no, no. Drag him away. <laughs> so that went over the line. But the other two, had like we were just doing it. That the, No, it was like pretty much the kids won't get the darker stuff. Yeah. and the Yeah. Were there any parents though who didn't appreciate that the, it would go over the kids' heads and were just angry because they were like that was inappropriate for children? Yeah, some did. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, some. Yeah, some just hated the koala bear. Even in the third one, we liked him. Didn't like the koala bear. Anymore, so. Fair enough. Uh, but mostly, I think the early days of the second one because it was just such because I didn't have an agent or press or anything. I had to do it all on my own. So there's only like four people in the first one. They just walked out. <laughs> Then we had eight, and then one day all the comedians came. Yeah. So there's two families. Of course, they left because there's loads of adults laughing and all this <laughs> stuff. Going, this is weird. And I was like, no, it is weird. You're right. Totally. But then once the reviews were started coming out, they were like, oh, we, we were coming knowing what it was. Mm, yeah. So for parents, it was a chance to sit and watch an actual comedy show yeah. that wasn't crap for the kids. Because I made it because I saw the posters for kids shows and I thought, this looks so shit like yeah. they're all dressed as dinosaurs going, and it was always like really weak comics I thought I was like is this how you do it really you just go in we just want to be up in Edinburgh for a month so I know we'll do a kids show and I was like I've seen you gig and you're, and I wouldn't even watch you as an adult like, the poor kids after I was like oh no I can see what you're doing I mean there's some great kids shows as well I'm not just you know the, my people that I know and friends with um, but just any one friend now yeah. <laughs> I think this is my problem I think because I make fun of every type of comedy no one knows if I like it <laughs> but I do generally I just I just find it funny people make fun of what I do because they don't, they're... Cause they don't. Nah. you can't really. <laughs> I'm, my shows are making fun of what I do <laughs> second guess everyone so. there's a lot of slagging off different types of comedy in the news show yeah. I would say <laughs> yeah, it's great I fucking love it but I don't know if it's that like comics comic thing you know yeah but I don't I, I don't try and do it I hope people know like I'm joking like even when I'm messing like with I'm just joking with my like, so, but I don't I admire like I think everyone thinks I like I don't watch comedy at all really I really don't <laughs> I don't really like watching comedy, and I don't like. I don't listen to comedy podcasts. I said we listen to one about the Wild West. 
Yeah. Fucking pathetic, really. Oh, no, and, <laughs> and blow out uh, by the Palmer's one. But, uh, <laughs> so I don't engage with comedy when I'm not doing it. But, so I have to sit through when I'm doing shows, like I'm seeing and things, or I'm, I'm aware of certain things. I've seen, you know, obviously you see comedies and you go on. But I wouldn't make fun of... <laughs> So I don't make fun of... like I like things I can't do, really. I think everyone thinks I only want to watch wacky... Like, oh, my God. But I don't like watching that kind of comedy because to me, I just go, God, I wish I thought of that. <laughs> oh, I'd love to do that. Or, oh, I have done that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm pretty sure they saw me do that. But that's fine. Um, that's fine. And, uh, so I like watching comedy that I can't do. So I, I know I make fun of certain types of comedy, but I'm impressed when... I see somebody who could like do an improvised rap, you know. Mm. I go, I could do that. So well, you did do that, and I mean, I did. Yeah. <laughs> so, so things I poke fun at, I like to. I hope people know like, it's with an amount of affection. Like mm-hmm. it's not. I don't think it's done in a horrible. Yeah, yeah. I think it's done in a playful yeah. way, and I think that the joke is generally that I'm not very good at doing a lot of things. So I, it's a bitterness goes, ah, well, you think you're better. And there was always people more successful than me as well. So it's yeah. not like I'm never punching down. I'm always going, this person doing better than me. <laughs> and I think it's the joke being that I'm just a really bitter comic. <laughs> so, yeah. So I do sort of poke fun, but I don't really mean, it, you know. I like quite, you know, I love Peter Kay. I don't think people would expect me to go, I love Peter Kay's for it. I'd rather sit and watch Peter Kay than any, most of the comics, right? Than Andy Kaufman. I love Andy Kaufman. Yeah. Yeah. I'd rather watch Peter Kay than Andy Kaufman do an hour. You Just would... him reading <laughs> Chaucer, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> uh, wrestling women or something like yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah. Really. Fair Did you play. ever watch the man? <laughs> <laughs> Did you ever watch Man on the Moon? Uh, I the did, yeah. Film? I was talking to Nick L about this. That's not a good name, don't click. But we were saying, like, I can't... I watched the film Jim and Andy, and it, I just hated it. Uh, Jim Carrey, just about his process of becoming it. Yeah, Andy because Andy Kaufman wasn't like that everyday life. And yet he's going around treating all of Andy Kaufman's friends and family like crap mm. to get in the headspace. But like, they're all going, but he never, Andy never spoke to me like that. And, mm. and Jim Carrey's running around doing it. I'm like going, no, I couldn't be arsed with that. Just mm. act. Yeah. Do the film. Yeah, <laughs> but it's good. But to me, it's just, I mean, what am I going to go at Jim Carrey's? I mean, he's a great actor. <laughs> slagging off Jim Carrey. <laughs> That's what not punching that? down. No. Probably, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if you're watching, Jim. <laughs> <laughs> I was talking about Jim Carrey the other day. Of course, I remember. About, like, Batman Forever and how bad Tommy Lee Jones is in that. Yeah, you hear me, Tommy Lee Jones? <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's Two-Face. He's rubbish in that mm. Batman Forever. And it's not really his fault, but it's because he's against Jim. I can totally see why, because Tommy Lee Jones is an amazing actor, but when you've got Jim Carrey, who, like, if he went... There's no point even trying to compete with him on... Because he's going to blow everyone off the screen because mm. he's just such a force of nature. And it, that You've got Tommy Lee Jones going, no. I think I'll I think I'm gonna out act uh, and he's going Whoa! It's just like, oh this is horrible. Just let Jim Carrey walk around yeah. doing his thing. Is there not quite a bit of tension on set between them two, I heard? Yeah, I think they, they hated it. Because yeah. I think Jim Carrey going, going Whoa! and I think he went, I hate you with every <laughs> <laughs> But you know, um I can't remember what point it was, yeah. But yeah, Man on the Moon, yeah. I liked it years, but the more I watch it now I kinda of go. Uh, I think since watching that documentary it's put me off it weirdly. Yeah, no, mm. I can see that. It's also weird as well, like with biopics, isn't it? Because it's like, because there is just loads of footage you can watch of the actual person, and then it's just mm. somebody playing them. It's like, I could just go and watch the fucking stuff. Do you yeah, know I mean? think the only film I really appreciated the person's um, uh, like depiction of the main character was JFK. Aye. Because you just see him have his head blown off, that's all you see. <laughs> 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 it's actually JFK. That's it. He was hardly in it. <laughs> Come here to watch JFK. <laughs> well, the most negative part when he has his head blown off. I want to see the re- I want to see the real JFK. I um, can see you doing that. The yeah. French one, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Can your head can blown, your head off. blown off. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can see that. <laughs> <laughs> Have you ever had any mad audience interactions? Like people have taken it the wrong way. I know you were saying about the parents there and stuff. Like, what sort of people do you attract to your? Not really. I don't think I've had two. No, not really. No. You stole I that think... guy's shoe in Newcastle. Remember? Sorry. Remember you stole that guy's shoe in Newcastle. You were comparing. Oh, did I? We did a weekend <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. A guy oh, yeah. couldn't take. His... He kept having his feet on the stage, and you were 
revving for him for it all night. Oh right, yeah, yes, I do. yes, I still. What did I do with the shoe? I should have done my just pants. Just ran off with it. I yeah. just ran off with it. Yeah, <laughs> you still got it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if he's not going to pay the ransom, <laughs> um, he's not getting it back. Um, yeah, not really. I'm not really had to. I think because it's done. I think I've let people know it's a joke a lot of the time now. Because I want people to have fun, really. Yeah. At the end of the day, I know it sounds like a, I sound like it's such a. <laughs> but really, I just want to be funny, and at the end of it, do all these silly things. But ultimately, I want people to go, "Oh, oh well, you, well, you, <laughs> um, so yeah, just try to have fun with it, really, and let them have a good time. So come to my tour show. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking arseholes. <laughs> I've seen, um, I, I know you've walked with him a bit, um, but I did, I've seen a clip of you, uh, your roast battle with Johnny Vegas. Oh, yeah, yeah. But I started clipping that. I thought I might as well clip the three times I've been on telly. <laughs> 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 Look, I've got more hair. Um, yeah, so that was quite fun. That was quite horrible, actually, because you've got to, someone that you really like and admire. Mm. I think Johnny Vegas is one of the best stand-up, you know, best comedians that we've had in the past 40 years or so, and uh, and then you've got to go up there and go, oh, yeah, your wife left you. <laughs> it's like, this isn't television, is it, really? But, I mean, again, I'll do anything. <laughs> <laughs> you, want to, you want me to break a national treasure's heart? <laughs> I'll do it. But you, Johnny Vegas was on your Radio 4 series as well. Yeah, yeah, it was fun. It was... Um, He's just dead good, isn't he? Like, so you can write. He's one of those people. Like Amy Gledhill was in it as well, and it's like certain people you can write something for, and you know they'll just make it funnier. Mm. Thank God. (laughs) 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 Certain words and certain turns of phrase will sound so funny coming Mm. out of that person's mouth. You know, so there's certain like. like, We had one episode where obviously Johnny's the most famous person in the first, like the first series particularly. Johnny's the big star. But it's my sitcom that he's a big, obviously bigger. So we put him in a Dalek for the whole episode. That was the joke. He gets trapped in a Dalek, so you can't even hear his voice. He's going through the Dalek thing. So it's just like, yeah, yeah, yeah. But you can still tell it's Johnny Vegas, but as a Dalek. <laughs> but, the, but the producers are going, do you not think we should be using Johnny? I went, no, isn't it funny, though? You get the most famous person, and it's a Dalek. <laughs> it's just don't know it. So when South Park get George Clooney to play a dog and he just goes woof woof it's <laughs> actually <laughs> George Clooney in the studio <laughs> not quite that you know, but <laughs> how did you find what with him like uh, was it because I take it obviously you're saying he's a, a big <laughs> kind of hero of yours he's brilliant yeah I think like after a while you realise people are just people aren't they you know and I think at first the first few times you meet someone you're a bit Ugh. but then you know we all have to go to the toilet <laughs> I mean, I don't have to follow you, but I did follow Johnny each time. <laughs> so, sorry, Johnny, I've just got to get past this fame thing. <laughs> you need more wiping. I heard it. I heard that. Before wiper. Um, but yeah, and then we did the third series, it was really funny because it was, uh, well, ironically, it wasn't. But the um, <laughs> it was without you know, Rosie Mourinho <laughs> after three years of rooting for us apart. <laughs> I think so, yeah, yeah. But it was like the the uh, it's a real gag heavy sitcom, so it's just like gag, gag, gag. So it needs an audience. But then it was COVID, so they went, we were going to record it without the audience. I went, well, can we not just wait because it doesn't mm. make any the rhythm of it's off if it's just me going the <laughs> because we're all talking in yeah. jokes. It's just weird. yeah. So. So they didn't. We had to record it in like booths and people on Zoom. It was me and Johnny was on his own in a studio in Liverpool. We were in London, all on all in different booths. Like Alexis Sales over there, Jack D was at home. You've got like uh, Terry Minot was at home. He'd made like tried to make his own sound booth, but the cat kept crawling on it. <laughs> we're going, this is not right. We're in the BBC Radio Theatre for the other ones. What's this? Mm. And Johnny. He just sat on his own in the studio, just and it's like you can't have the same rhythm and yeah. no. and uh, and at four fifteen on the first day, well, it was Mick Ferry went. Can you hear an ice cream van? I went, yeah. The technician went, yeah, it's the ice cream van comes past about four ish every day. I was like, but you're a fucking sound studio. <laughs> How can I hear an ice cream van outside? Surely <laughs> the main thing is be soundproof. Yeah. And then the next day at 4.15, we all went waiting and we just heard, duh, 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 duh. I went, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> is this what it is now? Before it's like just waiting for the ice cream van to go back. Right at end of the set of Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm, I wouldn't mind that. Um, yeah. But yeah, it was great. Yeah, it's just great working with people. And um, 
I like working with. I just like working with comics in general. That's why I have loads in the show. Mm. It's better, isn't it? It's lonely doing stand up. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think me and Mark even said that after we saw you. Like, hey, look, part of it is a brilliant show, but part mm. of it is you just look like you're having such a good time with your band and everything. And yeah. It, I always feel jealous when I see musicians of like they've got their pals up there with them and we yeah. come off and go on on our own and it's lonely. But you, you, you lot look like you're having a blast and you're making the band laugh and it's a really infectious thing. Yeah, no, I agree. I think it's that. I think that's the other thing I was just saying about having fun is that why would you go up and I just want to have fun, you know? It's like I love like a lot of my best mates are comedians, you know. So I, oh, yeah. I uh, <laughs> so I like hanging out with them. And so it just seems to me to make sense to get them in the yeah. show. And, um, yeah, like, I'll make the band laugh. They make me, me laugh, you know, as well, and that energy. Because, again, like, if you're doing a show, we've all had ones where it's a bit flat. And it's like, oh, fuck, I know this works because I've done it ten times and this is just a flat day and they're not mm. going with something's off. But if you've got someone behind you and you can get like, fuck, you know. So I'll make them laugh. And then, it, and then that all weirdly bleeds into it. Yeah, because then they go, oh, they're oh, okay, they're having fun. But if I was just up there on my own, people feel awkward. Yeah, because I've got lines now in in my set as well where I just put the audience at ease. Like uh, after you just say like, you don't have to worry if it's quiet. I don't worry about me because I'm fine with that. Absolutely, don't <laughs> because it makes the audience more nervous. Going, oh god, no one's laughing. But I'm like, I don't don't mind. It's fine. <laughs> it's better for you. So I do a whole bit about that, and there's a bit worked in, uh, which I'm really good in the show, but. I find that, that, that it, like you say, if you can see people on stage having fun, it makes you have more fun because you're going, oh, yeah, that's what we're meant to be doing. You yeah. forgot that, you know. No. <laughs> you see, I've been being alone in life. Like, you, you've done the circuit for, for how long, would you say? I don't want to say. Right. A while? <laughs> Too long. Right. What's, what do you think's your worst? Or how have you found the road and travelling about the country and all that sort of stuff? Well, I'm a bit, yeah. At the minute, I'm fed up of it because I'm just, I've had a cold for about three weeks. When that does the tour cold? start? It's not even started. It's Friday. Fed up, it? I know. <laughs> <laughs> fed up of it already. It's better uh, though when it's your tour, on it, I suppose, than like just going and doing circuit gigs and all that. Yeah. Stuff. I'm looking forward to the tour. I'm a bit tired of the circuit now. Mm-hmm. Not to be like, I like gigging. You know, I do like gigging, but when you've been doing it for like 15, 17 years, I'm a bit like, I must surely have done my time now. Aye. I need mm-hmm. to get. Like I want to do the tour. Like that's why I'm excited about the tour. Um, nervous about the tour because it's you obviously going. Please come with me. But equally, I'm excited because then you go. Well, these people are here for me. Not all of them. Some people have got you know a t- maybe found a two for one offer or or you know they're just they've just gone. Oh, this looks fun. And then uh-huh. they come along and go. This isn't for me. <laughs> but generally, people come to those shows because they want to see you. Mm. So that gives you an extra. You know, you have more fun with that. But. Yeah, but the circuit, you know, and again, I'd, I'd, I'd really do, I think I've got to become a better comedian over the past two years because I used to MC all the time, but now I do sets and I very rarely MC. It's, I think it's really, in, weirdly, after even 15 years, I've gone, oh, I'm better. Mm. It's just made me better because I go, well, this is my time now. I don't have to worry about keeping the night going. Well, you got another act on, or if the act doesn't do great, you have to go, oh, I've got to get them back up. Or they, mm. I just go, oh, I'll just do my bit. Yeah. And I go, I want to make sure they have a great time. And then they go... And in a way, you want them to go, that guy was, I love, you were my favourite kind of yeah. thing. I know it sounds a bit competitive, but you, yeah. but you want them to go, one, to, you look at, I look at an audience and I go, they've paid so much money for this. I don't want them to have a crap night because mm. they've paid for the tickets, travel, and whereas a bit before you're like, going, maybe they're not my crowd, but now I go, well, you just make them your crowd because it's not fair Yeah. to go on with the attitude. Yeah, well, they just didn't get me. Mm. Or maybe you were shit. Yeah, well, <laughs> but years ago, that was my arrogance. I was like, yeah, they just didn't get me, but I was just being shit. Mm. a lot of the time you know and then like or if a gig was going badly rather than try and pull it around and just go well that's because I'm the comedian's comedian but now I go no just make them laugh Phil because that is the joke that's the job <laughs> remember the job remember the job <laughs> so yeah so they've got better but but with the circuit I've kind of gone um, I'm just tired of travelling yeah um, but I don't I'm not like in a bitter oh, we show. but I'm just knackered yeah. <laughs> I just want a couple of weeks off now and then but I can't because I'm going on tour <laughs> <laughs> Come and save me look really tired. <laughs> Do you think hosting a lot like kind of makes you a wee bit maybe lazy in terms of like writing and turning stuff over and all that kind yeah. of stuff? I think so. I think that's probably why I, I think I did it because I just thought because I did a new show every year. So I was like, well, I'm always writing a new show and I never wanted to be a stand up anyway. So I thought I want to get onto telly and write stuff. And the further you get into it, you go, oh, well, that's not happening. Right. <laughs> and so 
if I want to keep writing and being and getting more out of the experience for me as well, I've got to write and do a new set and do all that. See if you're doing a show and you're talking about your fake kids and then you do a 15 minutes. Are you just going to need to do the material about your fake kids but not do the reveal that you don't actually have them? Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> I tried that. The problem is I used to do shows where I could never get the stuff in because there were so many bits that were just so in the show. So I could never take bits out and use um, them. So this show, I was like, I need bits I can take out and put in a set. Um, but, yeah, with the fake kids thing, I've sort of changed that now. So I mentioned it in a way, but without saying I'm a dad. But I did for a bit after that show. I was going on stage and doing like five minutes. But then I just, but then I just quickly go. I don't even have kids. Like, oh, that's kind of weird, that isn't it? Got this bit. We were going. So it, uh, it didn't quite sit nicely in the middle of a twenty. <laughs> we go. Oh, we like it. What's it? Oh, he's got. A, oh, that was weird. <laughs> well, stick with me for another eight, and then I'll get off. And go, no, no, we're done. We're done. But, have you ever yeah. had any like mental things that you want to do, then it's just not worked for whatever reason, venues or whatever? Is there, or do you just make it work? Do you just find a way? Yeah, I suppose, yeah. I mean, like, particularly when I was uh, early on, when I was trying to find out what I was meant to do, I think I used to be more of a prop comic, and then I tried to get out of that. And I couldn't figure out where I was meant to, what I was meant to be doing. And then you get fed up with carrying stuff around. Mm. And plus, I was shit at a prop comic. Not really a prop comic, but I was trying to be a bit more like, a bit wacky. Whoa. <laughs> and I was like, I can't be asked. I haven't got the energy for that. <laughs> <laughs> I did one once where I knew they had a smoke machine. So I'd, only, I'd try and do this thing where I was like singing on a, doing like a really sad song, but then I fell off and like really hurt myself, but I couldn't get up. But then the smoke machine enveloped me. And it's just me. But you've got like this really sad song playing, but I'm just coughing. Like, <laughs> <laughs> But they didn't turn it on enough, so I was just lying on the floor, <laughs> and I just like a bit went, and I'm going, <coughs> and I'm like, get, get up, you clearly not hurt yourself. I was like, well, yeah, because they haven't put the smoke machine on enough. So you just saw me carefully land next to a hole in the wall, and now everyone's wondering what I'm doing. So it's just like very awkward. I mean, I finished the bit. <laughs> <laughs> Silence. But yeah, there's a few. Yeah, I've, done, I've had bits that haven't worked, but you know, you just take them out quick, don't you? Then I just go, well, yeah, I'm taking risks. <laughs> uh, rock and roll <laughs> I heard you talking about a corporate you'd done a while ago as well um, I only did I remember telling my agent years ago when I, my old agent before the funds and games we, but did, we parted ways before that because they didn't like the idea um, uh, I said like, I want to do more corporate why can't, why can't I do corporates they pay loads of money and they're like, we don't really think you're the right act. I went, yeah, yeah. I remember I did one and I had to leave through the kitchen. <laughs> like, yeah. Turns out you're right, but I have not got the energy for a corporate. Because <laughs> I was there going, who the fuck do these people think they're? <laughs> like, just corporates, they just shout at you. Mm. And they're like, and it's all work dudes. So they're all drinking. You don't know what they're like. They've mm. been drinking all day. And you've got to be a really certain kind of, I think it's a skill. Again, like, I think people think, because I'm like, I couldn't do it, that I hate acts that can do it. But I genuinely think it's such a skill I don't have. And I'd love to have that skill because they earn so much more than me. Like people think they go, oh, you've won. I'd rather be them earning all that money than me getting nominated and having no money and not getting on anything. I'd rather do that than that, you know, because that's more rewarding because they've got like smeg fridges, <laughs> you know, extensions, and I've got a 50 pound beetle outside. <laughs> I don't give a fuck if any comedians like me. I don't give a shit, really. Um, you don't even pay for tickets. Comedians. Yeah, they don't pay yeah. for tickets asking for you. I don't even know you or your third wife. Why am I giving you free tickets? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm like, yeah, so I don't write, so I'm not bothered if you like me or not. Commission, so not, buy a ticket. <laughs> They're only a fiver, that's what annoys me. Yeah. I've, had to, I've had to give millionaires in Edinburgh <laughs> yeah. who I've seen in the abattoir at one of the VIP bars have asked for free tickets. I've put their name on the door and I was like, I used to watch you on telly in the night, and you won't pay five pounds yeah. to watch a five star. <laughs> I'm like this is unbelievable yeah of course there's a free ticket yes yes of course please sleep with my wife yeah. <laughs> don't have a wife so I don't really <laughs> um, next to our show is that <laughs> yeah. take my wife please um, but the uh, um, yeah I can't remember what my point was yeah so corporates um, I just wish I could do it this is such a different skill and I just can't I haven't got the energy to just and I've got better now at biting my tongue, but I think I was just there going, who the hell do these people think they are? They don't think. So I would just shout at them or 
Mm. I think at Sheffield once I ran over the tables and kicked all the food over. And there's a, <laughs> and there's a thing, because they have these big tables, of it's Christmas day, all these builders, and they're, going, and they're just horrible for 15 minutes. And Dave Longley sent me the video clip, he filmed it, and I didn't know, and I was there going, and I put online, I went, I'm actually really professional now. He went, oh, yeah, I remember. And I went, oh, I didn't know you filmed that. And it's just me, you run over the tower, I go, you listen to me, you piece of shit. I go, I'm fucking your shitty city, you fuck you. And I kick his food over, and they all drag me off, and they all just start beating me up, with my legs go in the air, and I go, fuck him. And the bounce is coming, I go, oh, my God. <laughs> That sounds Critics like one score. of This your... is one of his most elaborate pranks. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. There he goes again. It's one paid of off 200 builders. <laughs> God, and an ambulance. <laughs> Stretch <laughs> around. <laughs> I'm Andy Kaufman, yeah, <laughs> <embraced. laughs> But yeah, but that was in my younger days, you know. I'm more professional now. I've, I'm really trying to like paint a figure of myself as being more professional. But it's really boring when you come on shows like this. You don't want to sit here going, yes, I turn up on time and I do my job and then I go home. And you go, well, I'll tell you about the time I got beaten up in Sheffield. <laughs> there you go. That That'll get me on Phil telly. Darkfell, wasn't it? Darkfell, yeah. Dark <laughs> yeah. I have been drinking, though. Yeah. Maybe Darkfell is Phil. <laughs> Should have looked better than booking Darkfell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, yeah you, you, you emailed Darkfell <laughs> at uh, blueyonder.org. <laughs> I know you've gigged all around the country and stuff like that, but you're, have you been based in Manchester for most? most of the time yeah mostly because I always feel like a lot of the gigs that you'd like these kind of like weird like gigs out skirts of Glasgow and places around Scotland the northern circuit seems kind of similar to me like do you think any times like or any sort of venues you've walked in like they've just been the complete like worst setup imaginable just the most unplayable gigs you've done Oh, there's some, I mean, we've, we've all had... I had one last night, right? Which was fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is funny, Hot though. Yeah. the press. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've do, I've, they sent me a clip of the second time it happened at the gig last night, which I put on. It's only like a little short one, but someone filmed it. And it was... Uh, and I was on stage, and it's in a barn, like a little barn, not like a big old barn. It was like a tiny barn, and it was like a lovely little audience and stuff. And um, Dave Twentyman and his wife run these gigs, and uh, they're really lovely little gigs. And they're going, oh, it's meant to be haunted. And it was like, oh, God. And so I go, oh, it's meant to be haunted. And then a fucking bat flew through the audience. Right? <laughs> and I was like, oh, my God, fuck. And everyone went, oh, fuck. And it was horrible. They went in a hole just behind me. Which You just can't relax. You're going, there's a fucking bat there. <laughs> and I was going, oh. and then after, right at the end, I was wrapping up. And, a ma- and I mean, it was like a fucking kestrel. <laughs> A bat, a different bat went, Fuck, and we all went, fuck it. Up. And it just started flapping around. I was going, oh, my God. And the barman was going, ah, and he's just flapping around. I went, this is just rank. Like, but it was funny. But then you go, yeah, I suppose that's why I quite like the circuit, because you get things that you turn up, and you go, well, this will be interesting. And you go, oh, my fucking God, a bat. And just going, yeah. I'm not even allowed to kill it. Uh, not that word. <laughs> I don't want to go around. But, yeah, it's things like that. And... Um, I did one, I talk about it in my set, there's one I did at a lavender farm. <laughs> What's fucking... a lavender farm? Um, it's just, it's just, just a farm that's lavender. Yeah. lavender or something? Yeah, right. it was rank. And it was outside. And I had this, this horrible sick sheep appeared towards the end of the set. <laughs> and it was just horrible. And it's in my, I had it in my show, I still do it for stand-up now and then. I had to clip it for a thing, but you've got to clip everything to like a minute and third. I know I've got to get used to clipping stand up, but I just well, can't. Comedian destroys six sheep. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's pretty much like that. But it's like, it's a six minute bit, you've got to get to below 90 seconds, or else yeah, people yeah. can't be asked to watch it. But everything was just going wrong at this gig. Well, everything was bad. It's like a dual carriageway, literally there. <laughs> uh, the stage is like crap. Everyone's like just lying on the floor, lavender, spitting. And then a peacock keeps going, gah, gah, gah. <laughs> I was going, what is my fucking career? And then the sheep just appeared and went, oh my God, what the fuck is it? He's going, eh. and it was so rank. Uh, I talk about it, I go, like, it was so disgusting, it put me off wool. I'm like, I can't <laughs> even wear. And, it, and, and I said to the person running it, I just like, trail went, oh my, I went, oh my God, what's this? And he went, uh, Oh, yeah, that's lived longer than any sheep should. I, like, oh, <laughs> <God."> <laughs> okay. I looked at it and I went, oh, my God, I think it has. It was going, eh, it's fucking kill me. I was like, oh, my God. And, uh, and he, I thought he was looking at me, but then I was like, and then, so I think it was looking at the joke carriage where he's going, just let me out. The pen. <laughs> and, um, and, I went, and then I went, I went, well, why is he still here? And then he goes, um, yeah, well, apparently it costs like £89 to have him put down, so... Uh, so the farmer's just going to wait. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's like Liam Pickford's beetle thing. 
So yeah, that was a <laughs> tough gig. I, I, when I turn it on stage, I go. Uh, so I don't think your career is where you want it to be. If after your gig, you have to have a whip around to kill a sheep. <laughs> 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 your career is really where. <laughs> Come on, we want another five, and let's kill it. <laughs> <laughs> You go, well, it had a happy ending. We raised the 89 pounds. And, uh, and I just did it with a brick, kept the money. But, um, but yeah, that was a gig, and I was just going, what is my fucking... I'm 15 years in, and I've got to perform next to an ill sheep that's dribbling, going... This peacock. <laughs> I heard you talking about your family, seeing you on Russell Howard's Good News or, or whatever the, that programme was. Oh, yeah. And what was it? This real, real family this time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Family. <laughs> real family. We're yeah, family from uh, Kirby in Liverpool. And uh, they went, uh, well, they said it to my mum, actually. They were like, so you're Phil on the Russell Howard's, aren't we? We were watching it. And then he came on. <laughs> And I come, you come on at the end and do 10 minutes, like mm. five, 10 minutes of the stand up. Mm -hmm. And they went, oh, right. They went, yeah, we turned it off. It wasn't for us. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> so they'd watched like an hour of Russell Howard. And then their own cousin came on. <laughs> and they went, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Halfway through, 25 minutes. <laughs> well, my, my family are big Phil Ellis fans. I've told you this. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, are, yeah, 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 my mum and dad. You, yeah, you forced them to come. <laughs> and then they loved it, they're going to come again. Oh, great, are they? Yeah, oh, yeah, great, yeah. yeah, we could do it. I can't get them to shut the fuck up about Phil Ellis. So oh, that's nice. <laughs> nice. Well, you've very, been very supportive and championed. I do appreciate it. But I do like, joking aside about, like, not, we don't want the, it is nice when your peers, you know, other, other comics like you because... And, and it's so easy in this industry, I think, to always go about all the negatives. So many people are going, it's horrible, it's such a toxic... I actually think it's quite a nice. And I've been yeah. in, I've worked in factories. Now that's not fun. <laughs> <laughs> but I think generally, and I know, of course, like anything, there's people, bad people I do get. But I don't think we, what I'm trying to say, I don't think we celebrate the nice side of the industry enough. Mm. And I think there's so many supportive acts who have helped. I wouldn't have done anything in Edinburgh if it wasn't for the comedians like yourselves, that, you know, telling other people and coming to see the shows. Because I know I go, I don't watch a lot of comedy. I, I will try. I just can't. <laughs> Bring myself to do it. Yeah. <laughs> but I'll always try and support other acts. I do try. But yeah, the support from other comedians does mean a lot. And it's why it does well because everyone goes and talks about it. They come and it creates, and that's actually brings reviewers in. Mm. And the panel people are in there, they hear it through other comedians. They come and see the show because they've said, oh, you need to go and see Phil Ellis's. Mm -hmm. So that's how it happens. And mm -hmm. if it wasn't for that support, I wouldn't have anything. So. Uh, so it's yeah. <laughs> it's so much to me. Jake, part of the reason why comics like you so much is because you're just slagging everybody else. On the stage. Yeah, we wish we could be saying that. <laughs> <laughs> we want to be on that side. I don't know. I don't know why people. I don't know why comedians like me. Um, I think it's because I'm just messing about. Really, I think I've got like I don't know. I think if you'd know, then you'll stop being funny. Yeah, you don't want to think about it too much. Do you? Just carry on no. and then go. Oh, I hope people keep liking what you do. Because it's well. sort of come full circle with, I mean, you probably don't want to publicly put anyone on, on blast, but like I remember you talking about certain theatres or places that, and festivals even, where it's a very cool, it's a cool place, but they're not cool. Have you seen the line? No, I don't think they're cool comedians. <laughs> they're not fucking, anyway, but apparently they're cool. So there's little clicks in that, and sometimes you're trying so hard to get on these things, and when you get there, you go, oh, these people are lame. I don't want to be here. It's like when you're at school and you want to be with the cool... I remember really wanting to be with this cool group of people once and then going out with them all at high school like to one of the things. And they were the most boring. Yeah. And I was like, oh, why have I been trying to get in with these people all this time? And it's kind of a bit like comedy or anything in a way. You always want to be in with a certain crowd. And then you realise that the people you generally hang around with, you hang around with them for a reason because you get on with them. Mm. And you're like, like I like... I know that the monkey barrel also sort of straddles the cool thing, but generally all the people there... Are good people I like hanging out with them so the bar in the monkey bar is a nice place to go because mm. you're hanging out with people you get on with yeah. and, but you're not certain bars that you're meant to go to you get there and you're like oh my god yeah 100% there yeah. is something about that though I think like probably again some of like be based in Scotland you're based in the north and you do mm. want to get in with the sort of in crowd of London basically and that's mm. where all the fucking telly people and all that are and then it's yeah it's a thing and then you just realise like aye it's maybe just you know it's no exactly where you want to be no i'd say the thing i would like to be able to talk about more in my stand-up which is hard because it's always 
I think it's hard when you, are, I'm not saying I'm successful, but I've got a certain degree of in comedy that I've worked quite hard to get to a level where I know I've got an audience and I can do certain things. But like, it's so, and I will say it, it's a lot harder for working class comedians to make it. And if people go, no, it's not, they're full of shit. Because I'll tell you now, I lived in London for three years and I never gigged in London because I couldn't afford to. Because my money comes from doing comedy. Like, you know, I, I, I'm only full time because I have to go around and gig for a certain amount of money. I'd love to be able to do all the gigs in London where all the TV producers go and sit, you know, certain clubs where they'll just sit there and watch it and they pay 30 quid on a Friday. Now, I can't live off that, but the comedians that can are from a privileged background because they don't have to pay for the flat and they don't yeah. have to pay the rent yeah. because it's all paid for. I'd love to be able to go to some shitty gig in Camden on a Friday for 20 quid mm. and spend the night throwing toast at my forehead, covered in tinfoil, <laughs> you know, and with the fucking head of comedy from whatever dog shit channel sits there and goes, this is the new face of comedy. I'm going, well, but what about the Bermuda Triangle? I love that, right? But I can't. I've got to go to Hull and entertain a stag dude so I can pay my rent, you know. So that's it. So if you're going to say that it's not, that there's not a class dividing comedy, then you're just kidding yourself. Mm, yeah. Because, you know. It's, but yeah. The, yeah, there's so many people as well. If I see another push, posh person do a fucking Kickstarter, you can fuck off. It's like, <laughs> have you not heard the song Common People? What is going on? <laughs> Get your dad to pay for it. We know he's paying your rent. Yeah. Get him to pay for the yurt at 3 a.m. in Three Sisters. Yeah. Fucking arseholes. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So, yeah, um, there's no class dividing hey. comedy. <laughs> and I'm not acting like I'm fucking, you know, no, the you awful don't. dodger. <laughs> oh, oh, fuck <laughs> yeah. I'm not fucking, I'm not come from the, I'm not a street urchin from the north, you know, but <laughs> equally so, bloody hell. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I've not said anything positive. None of this sells the that's toy. That's actually came off the back of the. That's came off the back of you saying how positive and very. It's like it was. <laughs> I'm a real two faced piece of shit. I really love the industry. Fuck you, you posh pieces of shit. Fuck you. <laughs> and also, I don't think there's any problem with being posh in comedy. By the way, there's a lot of very privileged, funny people. Mm -hmm. There's a lot you should stop. <laughs> <laughs> if you ask yourself this, if you had to live, if you could only pay, live off the money you earn from comedy, would you be alive? <laughs> That's as simple as that. And if, <laughs> and if you wouldn't be, then stop. <laughs> I don't care how many sketches like that you do and get three million hits. If you can't, if you take all the money you made from comedy over the past year, add it up, and then add up all your outgoings. Now, if your outgoings are more than that, stop. <laughs> okay. That's a public service. For that's it. That's it. Stop. And Phil loves by that. That's why he's had to buy a fifty pound more. <laughs> <laughs> Two gigs and comes and <laughs> <laughs> It's a full week. <laughs> God, I'm such a hypocrite. Everything I say, oh. you're right. <laughs> oh, I've got to stop doing podcasts. Um, <laughs> just go on that. and absolutely any sort of re positive, like you say, really, really positive. I undo it all in like three minutes. Anyway, should wrap up. Um, <coughs> listen, Phil, thank you so much for joining yeah, us. Um, you are thank on you. tour uh, very shortly. You're doing the Glasgow Comedy Festival shortly. What date? I'm doing the Good Point. You're at the stand. I'm at the stand on... Um... I think it's the 9th of March, I think. Yeah, I let's find out. <laughs> is that sat? What the fuck is it? Big recommend. Great show. Yes. Thanks, yeah, it's a good show. Come to it, but I'll tell you when it's to come. Brilliant. Are you doing Edinburgh as well? Or you're up? I am. Uh... <laughs> so, I mean, cut this, just like we've had to cut half the fucking uh... episode. <laughs> Damn you, gift calf! <laughs> Come on! <laughs> yeah, fuck it. Have you heard the voicemail on gift calf? No. no. It's, fun, it's so funny. Because um, I have to ring it. Oh, I, my mum was always going, your voicemail is really weird. And some people think it's me and you ring it up and it's like, yeah, that little gift calf. <laughs> <laughs> some bloke. He's like, yeah, Phil's got to get your message at me. He's fucking busy. He might get, probably got no credit. Uh, <laughs> Phil, yeah, you're March the 9th, Glasgow. Yes, stand, March the 9th. And then Edinburgh is... On the 2nd of March, I'll be at the March. Monkey Bar in Edinburgh. But on the 9th of March, I'll be in Glasgow at the stand. What a show. <laughs> and my God, you're really pleased too. Particularly to Glasgow, quite a big room. 
That is a strong recommend for us. It's like a brilliant show. Fellas, funny as fuck. The band will be there. He's hemorrhaging money. Please do. (laughs) My God, yeah. We've got the full band in the uh, Scottish gigs. So please do come and see. Extra stage in for them. And if you're a millionaire, just give him a message and he'll put you on the door for me. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. If you're a big in the nineties. Drop me a DM <laughs> from your, your your mortgage-free house and I'll stick you on the door. God forbid you pay a minimal fee. But uh, thank you so much for having me. I'm sorry I've talked shit for an hour. No, that's, that's really funny. funny. Uh, where fun. else can people find you, Phil? Just online? Yeah, John, I nearly made that shit joke. Then. Oh, in your garden. Um, <laughs> I find another comedian guy. Well, if you want to follow me, oh, I'll be in the car park after the... Oh, stop. <laughs> Yeah. It's social media now for 12 years at least. 12 years we've had this joke. And you may think you've updated it. You haven't. You, haven't. you may think you've put a twist on the follow me, I'll follow you. You haven't. We've heard that one so many times. It's not new. Um, follow me at www.finaliscomedy.com. Uh, don't follow me that just go on there and buy tickets <laughs> the website is terrible it's like <laughs> so under like, construction I it, it's pretty much like, <laughs> it's it's like all my video it. clips like, if you want to purchase the full uh, version of Windows Movie Maker <laughs> <laughs> but it's based on my website I just went oh so it's going to cost this much to do it I went no forget it. I'll just do a Wix one <laughs> and, uh, and then they went well here's the and I was like no that'll do I'm after that you know what it is do you ever Go on anyone's website. No, ever. Our websites Never. are done. Exactly. No. So there's only a place to get tickets. I don't, I'm not going to spend ages trying to yeah. merge my photo into the background. <laughs> my photo is this anyway. <laughs> <laughs> You'd be disappointed if it looked good, wouldn't you? <laughs> Look, I'll show you on the thing. It's horrible. I took it up there and I was like, uh, and, uh, that, that's the front. Okay. <laughs> okay, that, my first website. Okay, uh, uh, what's the point of trying to make that? But I read. Anyway, please come. Uh, right, we'll follow him on socials. Right? We'll put all the links in the description. Um, as ever, just please remember to like and subscribe on YouTube. Give us a five star review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. <laughs> Get into this your street mates. So click street. that button. <laughs> <laughs> Go on, like and share. Right. Follow us, you know the drill. Uh, Follow us, we'll be outside after the show. <laughs> uh, I don't know what that is. <laughs> so tired. Right, thanks a lot. <laughs> Tune in then, guys. And we'll Thank you. Cheers, Phil. Thanks, Phil. Thank Thank you. Bye. <laughs> Thank you.